if you've ever had someone try and steal your brass at the range, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If he was over the age, or she was over the age of 50, make sure you leave a comment. The comment section is out of control. I have tried multiple times to tame it, and my pleas fall on deaf ears. Get in there and find out why it is the most lawless place on YouTube. I don't know what I've done to deserve this. If you guys are looking to support the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. Uh, you get sick deals and great prices, of course. You have to buy in 99 cents for the first month. Very cheap stuff. I think they were selling their RMRs for uh, it was like low 300s. Very cheap. Highly recommended uh, to get in there and check them out. I recommend them because I believe in them. If you guys are looking for sick bags and plaid, you have Vertex, and of course, LX Ammunition for all of your ammunition needs. Ladies, gentlemen, and of course, my not forgotten, but often overlook, N777s. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about something that I know you guys have been wanting me to talk about a lot, and that is the CZ Scorpion Evo 3 S1. So unfortunately, this one is semi-automatic. Um, I have two of these. Well, I have one. This is from a local shop. This one is, of course, SBR'd. Um, I'll be SBR'ing mine soon. So full disclosure on this, what is my relationship with CZ? Well, um, this was not from them. This is actually from uh, Big Daddy Unlimited, uh, who supports me with a lot of firearms and allows, allows me to be, I would say, more objective, perhaps, in dealing directly with the company. Ammunition is provided for by Fancy Brass. As far as my relationship to CZ, I talked to them. They're cool guys. They sent me a pistol review once. I haven't sent them back to them yet, and I get invoices for it about every month. I really do need to send that back to them. But in any case, um, I've been very excited to um, do this review for a while because I'm kind of on a uh, pistol caliber carbine kick right now. And uh, we'll be doing a large comparison up in the future. But for now, I wanted to give the Scorpion its own uh, video, its own time in the limelight, because I think it absolutely deserves it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, kind of launching off, I want to start off with prices, right? Because there's a lot of PCCs out there, and there's a lot of prices thrown around. So I just did the Strybog. Strybog is like, you know, six, like mid-600s, mid like 680, something around there without the brace. Um, with the bracer, of course, closer to around 800 or so, I guess. Um, with the Scorpion, you're looking at a price. I mean, it depends. It fluctuates. Um, depending on the model, you're looking between 800 to 900, somewhere around there. Um, of course, with the brace, a little bit more. Um, so roughly not too different on their prices. Pretty close, maybe about a month or two paycheck of saving, um, which is why I want to compare them a little bit. And then, of course, you have famously the BNT GHM9, which is compared to the Scorpion quite a bit, of course, famously with its little uh, grasshopper mouse eating the Scorpion on it, uh, engraved in it. So there's a lot of contention. A lot of companies are trying to beat the Scorpion because I think they set a really good example. Let's talk about what they did right, what they did wrong, and kind of my overall impressions of the CZ Scorpion Evo 3S1. So as we always do, we're going to be going tip to butt. So starting right here at the muzzle, um, the muzzle device, for me, it works fine. There are multiple different companies that allow you to do different muscle devices, install different ones. It's very easy to take off. And once you do take it off, there's actually threads underneath there that are protected by a thread protector. That thread protector is half by 28, the most common you know, threading you could possibly want. So any amount of suppressors or other devices are going to work on it. I think they did a really good job with the muzzle device, and I'm perfectly happy with it. And there are actually some really cool adapters out there, especially from HB Industries. They have a three-legged uh, tri-leg adapter for like the H and K style, and that's what I mostly use on pistol caliber carbines. So I'll be installing one of those on this fairly soon. But in any case, the stock muzzle device is fine. It does its job perfectly well. There's not a whole lot to compensate. Um, when I'm using hotter loads, it definitely does a great job there. Now, the barrel is 7.72 inches, perfect. And um, the barrel is cold hammer forged. So this is kind of a, what, what do you want to call it? Like a standard go-to now for many pistol caliber carbines to use cold hammer forged barrels on their builds. And that's awesome. I don't think you guys quite understand how um, lucky, lucky you are to be able to get have that quality of a barrel on these types of builds. And that lends itself to accuracy. The Scorpion is plenty accurate. Um, when I was zeroing this and stuff and shooting, I was easily standing offhanded, putting like little ragged holes with this thing. So it's very fun, very accurate to shoot. Um, 
No qualms about accuracy when it comes to the CZ. Moving from the barrel, we have the handguard. So the handguard um, is definitely a point where a lot of people like something different. So again, luckily, uh, I think what the CZ Scorpion did very well was that it allowed for a lot of customization. Perhaps that of all other things surrounding the CZ Scorpion will lead to its ultimate longevity compared to many of the PCCs that are currently out there in the market. Um, ease of customization easily makes for a great platform. It allows people to um, innovate and make things better, and that is absolutely true of the Scorpion Evo 3. Straight up, um, you know, too long didn't watch or too long didn't read. I think that the Scorpion straight out of the factory leaves a lot to be desired. But with very minimal upgrades as far as prices are, are concerned, you can have a really phenomenal uh, SBR, really phenomenal pistol caliber carbine. In any case, the handguard is perfectly fine as it comes from the factory. There's no issues there. A lot of people complain about the fact that the Picatinny on the top ends right here as opposed to extending out. Um, a lot of people say, oh, it's a stylistic choice. Um, it was stupid. We should have more, um, you know, uh, sight radius for our iron sights. I counter that with no one really uses iron sights anymore, and if you do, it's fine, you have yourself a problem right there. But for the vast majority of people, the the lack of Picatinny length is not an issue. And for me personally, based on where I put my uh, hand stop right there, that works for me fine. That allows my hand to wrap up over top there and get a very good grip on the weapon. So personally, I kind of like the way that rail is designed. Now, if you don't like this forward handguard, there are multiple others out there. So you have HB Industries, which I'm gonna reference quite a bit um, coming here. I think they may have a lot of really good innovative products. And in the future, I'll be taking mine, which uh, it's with a buddy right now. And I'll be completely outfitting it with HB accessories and we'll be talking about kind of the future of the Scorpion. But for now, we're running a mostly stock Scorpion. But in any case, um, you have Picatinny on either side and on the bottom with these standard handguards. We have the charging handle right here. The charging handle is non-reciprocating. It does not move at all. Um, I know that was a point of contention in my older Strybog video. So with the Strybog, the earlier models had reciprocating charging handles. The uh, newer ones do not. Now on the Scorpion, they've been non-reciprocating the entire time. You can easily change it from one side to the other. Well, not as easy as some designs, but certainly it is doable and possible. I personally keep it on the left-hand side because I have my hand forward of it already and I can easily manipulate it and do what I want with it. Now, as far as the manual of arms are concerned on the CZ Scorpion, they're somewhat interesting in my opinion. You can lock the bolt back, um, very much so like an MP5, and I think that's kind of interesting. Now, of course, on a closed bolt, that's not gonna work so much, and that definitely helps if I'm loading like a full magazine to be able to lock that back and then to drop it. Uh, it's helpful to say the least. But in any case, the charging handle is easy to actuate. If you don't like how small it is, which I personally like because I don't like things getting caught on my gear, then you can get an extended one from a variety of companies, including HP Industries, of course. Moving from there, we have our iron sights. So the iron sights, in my opinion, are very adequate. They're metal. Um, you have t uh, several different apertures. It's actually very well made. I've been very happy with the iron sights on this particular weapon. And I want to take a quick take a quick moment to talk about setup right here because if you notice on mine, I am running a Aimpoint Comp M5 with a Scalar Works mount. And the reason for that is with the Scalar Works mount that allows for me to still see the iron sights despite having um, a very tall optic right there. So I think it's kind of the best of both worlds. But in any case, if all you're using is a uh, iron sights, you're gonna be very happy. They are absolutely adequate with four different aperture sizes, a variety of other stuff. I'm definitely happy with those. Um, I hate when companies kind of scrimp on that and I've been uh, very pleased with the CZ. Definitely superior to what the Strybog offers on their variant. Given the price, it does make sense, but it's, I think it's worth noting that. Uh, the CZ Scorpion is also a very light weapon, around five pounds. Um, perfect, very maneuverable, very compact. Now, weight is kind of only so much of it because a lot of the weight kind of sits further back. Because of that, the CZ Scorpion feels like a very well-balanced weapon. I've been very pleased with the way it feels in the hand. <laughs> Moving from there, we have our sling mounts right here and here. Um, there's a lot of different conjecture as far as what sling mounts work for those. Personally, I just use paracord um, through those loops um, to attach my slings. That works fine. There are, there are so many different options there, but it's not your typical QD mounts, just as a quick note there. So 
we have our sling mounts. All right, moving from there, let's move down the weapon. Magazines. So the magazines in this video are provided for by Gun Mag Warehouse. Um, huge support of the channel since the very beginning. We can't thank them enough for all their help. In any case, they sent me the kind of three main type of magazines that come with the CZ Scorpion. We have the little boy right here. It's a 20 rounder. That is definitely excellent if you want to use this weapon in a concealed fashion, whether that be in a backpack or something like that. That is a very compact platform that can fit in a variety of places should you need it. So. The 20 rounder definitely has its place, but if I have my chance, if I have my choice, I'm going to use the 30 rounder. This is a more expensive version. This is a windowed version. In my opinion, probably one of the stronger versions. Um, this one is a little bit more expensive at around $30. The typical one you see are these translucent ones that are around 18. Now, one thing that I need to note when it comes to magazines, well, several things. Is something that I feel like I kind of skipped over with the Strybog and the GHM9 and multiple others, which is magazines. I don't think I put enough emphasis on magazines and what makes a weapon successful. A weapon lives and dies by its magazine design. The Scorpion, I would argue, has perhaps one of the better magazine designs of all uh, current pistol caliber carbines. Uh, Glock magazines are not a great option in pistol caliber carbines. I definitely like what CZ has done. These are robust and strong. The Strybog and GHM9 have both suffered from magazine reliability issues for a variety of reasons. Now I will say that BNT has done a lot to rectify that. And current magazines from BNT, stand by one moment here. Current magazines for the GHM9 have different floor plates which help um, with strength of the magazines. Despite that though, I don't feel that these magazines are quite as robust as the ones that are available for the CZ. Not to mention, many other companies are now making magazines for the CV CZ. I think it was a great initial design. Right now, Magpul makes a really sick 35 rounder, which sticks out just a little bit more, but is very sexy. Magpul makes some great products. So again, I kind of go back and touch that point of longevity. I do think that straight out of the factory that the B&T GHM9 is a better weapon. I just think it is. Now, that being said, it's also $1,500 as a, compared to $800 to $900. Um, and then, of course, add a brace for both of them, and you increase that price by $200 for both of them. But I think that the magazine design and the customization will add and ultimately make the CZ Scorpion a weapon that ultimately will outlive the GHM-9. The APC-9, not so much. That's a whole different story. But magazine design... Excellent. Now, funny enough, of any magazine um, I've ever done a review on or done reviews on, when I tossed one of these magazines, it exploded. And that being said, the floor plate came off and the spring shot out. Now, the actual body of it did not crack, but I thought that was funny that everyone was talking to me about the longevity of these magazines and one of them blew up on me. Not the fault of that in any case. So let's talk a little bit from there about how these drop free. This is one kind of point of contention that I do have with the CZ Scorpion, is when the bolt is locked back and you hit the magazine release, that guy is just not coming out. We'll try that with the other magazine. Nice, that one came out. So it looks like this one has a little bit more weight to it and will drop free. Let's check out the 20 rounder. No, that one will not come out. So primarily I'm using these magazines and because of that, when I'm doing my magazine changes, the magazine does not drop free on a bolt lock. So I've tended with the Scorpion to primarily do uh, L-shaped reloads. And really you should be proactive about your reloads and not allowing your weapon to go dry. So how I typically run that is I'll, I'll fire, fire, fire when I need to reload, grab the magazine, bring it up, L-shape, release, in, and then drop it, and then re-index this magazine. Now, what I can say about this is this weapon is fairly easy to insert a magazine, magazine in on a closed bolt. That's something that's definitely very important. So it's not awful in this easy scorpion. You don't have to like, you know, pound that thing in. Really, it's just a, a little bit of a forceful movement and you get it right in there. So when it comes to magazines, just make sure you're staying on top of your reloads. I haven't checked out the um, 
Magpul magazines to see if those drop free, but just something to note. Now, speaking of the bolt lock, so this gun does have last round hold open and the bolt release is very similar to what the Strybog had or more appropriately, perhaps the Strybog has what the CZ Scorpion has as a CZ Scorpion predates the Strybog. Now, compared to the Strybog, the Strybog had a little piece of sheet metal that came down that you pressed down and it was quite sharp. Uh, it worked, but it wasn't the best option. Compared to the Scorpion, which has a very finely machined piece of metal with steps, it's easier to actuate and get your hand on. I think a much better design than the Strybog. Again, people will be quick to point out, well, CZ Scorpion costs more, it should be better. And I agree, and that's definitely proven to be the case um, with that particular design feature. Now, when it comes to the magazine release, I don't like that quite as much. Now, that being said, like many other things, um, it's kind of a manual of arms thing. I do prefer, prefer of course, a AR-style release. That being said, there's an excellent product from Magpul that extends a small tab down that allows you to grasp, that, grasp the magazine and release the magazine at the same time as opposed to using your trigger finger for a lot of the reload type stuff, which I think is an excellent product and which I will be adding to my Scorpion in the very near future. So there are um, fixes and of course with that particular product it's like 20 bucks. So that's something I can absolutely see myself investing in to make this a more viable weapon. But from the factory, not the best option um, at all. All right, safety is a thing I also have a issue with. So the safety on this weapon is ambidextrous, which is good, of course. But the issue that I run into is that on my on the right-handed side, the with how high I can grip the weapon, that safety just digs right into my hand. Maybe you can't see it right there, but it's constantly drawing blood, which is cool. You know, I'm all about blood sports and stuff, but it's kind of rubbing my hand raw. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm also not a big fan of uh, the length on the safety. Of course, something that's very easily changeable, but from the factory, I wish it would have been a little bit more ergonomic um, than what they currently have on there. So you can see where uh, hand's going raw. It's when it goes down. Safety hits right into my skin right there. Whatever. The grip also I do not like. I don't like the angle on the grip. I prefer a more, uh, you know, something that has less uh, incline on it, a little bit more straight. It's a little bit more comfortable for me and better on my wrist. That being said, this is an awful. It's pretty close about the A2 grip angle that you have on like the classic M16, classic M4. So what's nice is again, like many other things, this is removable and changeable. That means they can easily change this out to something from HP Industries or Magpul or whomever and have a grip angle that is more conducive to shooting, in my opinion. So again, changeable, you know, again, another 20 bucks, but this stuff is starting to add up. But from the factory, not the best option of what they have. Now, let's get to the trigger. Perhaps one of the most disappointing things on the Scorpion, in my opinion. The trigger is just not good in my opinion. It sits at around nine pounds. Let's go ahead and let's get into it though. Let's go ahead and let's ghost the Scorpion trigger together and see what it feels like. And then we'll compare it to an MP5, which is the gold standard in my opinion. All right, so we have a little bit of take up. It's mush, mush. We have more mush, heavier mush, even heavier mush, more mush, about five, cell, five millimeters of mush, release. Nine pounds, easy. Um, maybe even more. Not the best. All right, let's check the reset. Okay, let's check the reset here. Okay, reset is positive, and with all that weight behind it, it definitely springs forward. Let's try that one more time. Mush, mush, mush. Nine pounds. Check the reset. It's about four millimeters of travel before you hit the reset on there. Just not a good trigger. The trigger is what really slows this gun down. Luckily, there are a variety of manufacturers that make both drop-in and multiple other triggers that make this way better. But as it stands from the factory, the trigger is, in my opinion, um, just unacceptable. Uh, you should not have a, a trigger that heavy. And I understand that people are gonna hop in and be like, well, military and police, stop. A nine pound trigger is out of control. Uh, I can understand like a five and a half or a six pound trigger on a military police weapon, but nine pounds is getting just absolutely 
ludicrous, and especially how this sugar feels. It's insane compared to so many of the great offerings um, out there. And I know I'm gonna compare this to the MP5. And of course the problem is, is that the MP5 is around $2,000, so they're much more expensive, but even a factory MP5 trigger, which aren't the best, are much, much better. This one, maybe four and a half pounds right there. That's a well-broken MP5 trigger. So the fact that this comes with such a terrible trigger, especially when a weapon like the Strybog comes with a, such an exceptional trigger, in my opinion, uh, makes me somewhat disappointed in the fact that it comes out of the factory like that. And I know I'm harping on that so much. I mean, you can still run this gun relatively fast, but you are certainly slowed down by that trigger. And that is absolutely unfortunate. All right, moving from there, I'm not gonna harp on that anymore. Stock, um, you have a variety of stock options out there. You have both the standard CZ stock. I opted to go with the Magpul AK stocks, and I have an adapter here from Reptilia. If you're not familiar with Reptilia, they're making some really good moves in the industry right now, making a lot of really good products. And they sent me this. Um, full disclosure, they're my buddies and stuff. I like them. But um, yeah, so the AK stock on this works perfectly well. It is foldable, of course. Uh, you can still shoot it folded. And uh, I think that the AK stock from Magpul looks pretty... Pretty bitchin' on this particular weapon. So that is that. So now that we've talked about everything, how does the recoil feel? Well, not that much different from the GHM-9. Um, a lot has been said about calling the GHM-9 the uh, scorpion killer, you know, the weapon which will end <laughs> the scorpion. But um, I don't really see that being the case. The they kind of have slightly different design features, and I think that ultimately the Scorpion wins out uh, once you are able to upgrade these. For example, if you were to, this one costs around you know, 1500, this one costs around 800. If you put the extra money into the Scorpion, you know, about $600 worth of modifications to upgrade it, and you compare it to, you know, a $1,500. So like a $1,500 GHM-9 and a $1,500 Scorpion, I'd 1,000% take the $1,500 Scorpion because it will be just a fire-breathing beast that will just suck souls. So I absolutely do love the Scorpion. I think that there are definitely some issues for me. You don't see a whole lot of competitors using it because there are some issues there. I imagine in future generations, they might make some various upgrades to make trigger swaps easier on this particular weapon. But I do think that the Scorpion is excellent. Um, I think it is definitely slowed down by its trigger. And I think that's one of the many reasons it's not seen so much in competition, especially when you have so many great alternatives like the APC-9, the JP 9 millimeter ARs and other things. But I think with some um, upgrades, and especially if they were to update it and make the trigger perhaps a little bit more user-friendly and some of the other controls, you'd have a really excellent design. So do I recommend the Scorpion? Well, it depends on what you need. I think that ultimately, the Scorpion is a better weapon than the Strybog and the GHM-9, but that comes down to a couple upgrades that need to be done to it. From the factory, I think that both the Strybog and the GHM-9 are more shootable guns out of the factory. But I think that what the GH, but I think that what the Scorpion has is has a lot of potential. That potential can be uh, harness or not harness, kind of up to you. But the Scorpion is definitely a very viable platform, even without those upgrades. Um, again, magazines and a very, very reliable, robust system. The CZ Scorpion is a blowback operated firearm. Because of that, it is an incredibly robust firearm. Like any other blowback operated firearm, you can see here I'm throwing sod dirt into it. Blowbacks. They work. And it's just firing no problem. So these guns will run. Is this gun for you? Well, it depends. Are you going to train with it? Because if you don't train with this, you're still going to look stupid. And that is kind of what I want to end on here is... So many people get so focused on the minutia of gun, just like we do in this channel. But ultimately, ultimately what it comes down to is you. 
can you shoot? Can you move? Can you shoot around barricades? Can you communicate? Do you know what you're doing? Without that training, you're not going to be a good shooter. So make sure that you get out there and get training. I was recently at a training event with BB. Um, it was awesome. We had a good time. We worked off barricades. Multiple other guys will teach you out there. A couple that I recommend. Cogworks, Bear Solutions, um, Haley Strategic, Esoteric, Darcy. Tons of great guys out there. Tony Cowden, Pat McNamara, tons of them. Get out there and get that training. Become good with your weapons and become lethal yourself where you don't have to rely so much on the weapon, but you know that you yourself are capable. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching. We have a huge PCC con uh, comparison video coming up in the very near future. I can't wait to do it. Stay tuned. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. And I've got nothing else for you. So you need to take care of yourself. And what I mean by that is not just working out because a lot of us will go to the gym, you know, I got a six pack, we got veins running down our biceps. We're like, oh, good to go, bro. I can, you know, rip a phone book in half. Great, but what's more important too is flexibility and especially joint health. There are a variety of things that you need to do and make sure that you're doing to ensure not just your health uh, right now, but your health in the long term. Things like cardio, things like stretching, yoga, Pilates, all that shit actually matters. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself because those injuries will eventually add up. Um, I had a couple of really bad neck injuries from back in the day in my military career from a bad jump and it's taken me a lot of time to get over them. Um, and I've been doing a lot of physical therapy and it's definitely got me to a better point. But still, it's made me think a lot about quality of life later down the road. Make sure that you take care of yourselves beyond just that you know, size and looking fucking shredded. Make sure that you're taking care of yourselves in every single way as far as mobility and pain and those types of things go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. You know, if you guys have gotten this far, the very last thing I'm going to uh, plug for you guys is Patreon. <sighs> Patreon directly supports me. So you guys who are out there, I post little videos and stuff for you, but the biggest thing is that money directly goes into camera equipment. I break cameras all the time. Um, I just... I just actually upgraded a camera because I broke an old one. Uh, memory cards, I've burned through them at least a couple every month or something like that. Lights, everything. That kind of stuff really helps the channel grow. If you want to really support me 1000%, it's there. And also, every four months, pick a guy to come out, shoot with me. So it's kind of a good time. Guys, thank you again. Take care of yourselves.